It is time to review one of my most anticipated movies of 2024, and I am so thrilled to report it did not disappoint. This right here is my review of Abigail. The movie centers on a group of criminals who are hired to kidnap a 12-year-old girl and then watch her for 24 hours in order to collect a $50 million payment. Soon into their stay at an isolated mansion, they come to realize that she's not your average 12-year-old. She's the daughter of a powerful underworld figure, and she's a vampire. If you dug Radio Silence's 2019 film, Ready or Not, I've got very, very high hopes you're gonna be into Abigail as well. There are some stylistic similarities, but one of my favorite things about comparing the two is that in Abigail, it is abundantly clear that directors Tyler Gillette and Matt Bettinelli Open are doing what they do best, but here they're doing it in a really fun and fresh way. And it applies to how they handle the vampire subgenre elements too, the two of them and also screenwriters Stephen Shields and Guy Busick, the necessary pillars are there. And yes, they are playing with some familiar rules, but it all feels so, it feels so reinvigorated because of Abigail, because of the situation she finds herself in, and also because of what she wants. With that, I'll go to Alicia Weir's performance as Abigail next. Yet again, she is just something else. If you saw her headline, Matilda the Musical, you already know that she's absolutely brimming with talent and her work in Abigail just further cements that in as absolute fact. So many elements of this performance that I loved. She is an ace at the action. I loved how playful she was with wavering between innocent victim and, and sinister vampire. And another thing that I absolutely loved is how you can always see the wheels in Abigail's head turning. You dare to lean in in an effort to know more and figure her out. And it's also one particular quality that I think is really going to enrich the movie on a second viewing because I just absolutely know there are so many cool performance nuances that I had to have missed. She is something else. So going from our vampire to our criminal ensemble here, Gillette and Bettinelli Open just struck gold across the board. So this is the second time I'm going to say this this year due to your monster premiering at Sundance. And, you know, also it's been abundantly clear for a while now. Melissa Barrera is a true star. I was immediately taken by her confidence and her wit as Joey in this movie. And even with those qualities that I loved, I also really appreciated how they let her make mistakes. It upped the tension of the film, the engagement level, and it also made her feel more real. Barrera has absolutely no problem going to the extreme in this film, but she also manages to keep Joey just grounded enough, and it really does wind up making that character the perfect anchor for the story. Now jumping over to Dan Stevens, who's having quite the year in horror between Abigail and also just wait until you see him in Cuckoo. I have a feeling I'm going to say this with every character here, but Dan Stevens in this role is pitch perfect casting. I do think all the criminal characters have a very effective touch of this, but in particular with Stevens, it's just so incredibly exciting watching an actor as deft as him play with this particular quality. He is so good at making his character feel incredibly dangerous, but also making it impossible for you to not want to trust him so that they have a fighting chance of making it through the night. I want to tell you the levels that Stevens goes to in this role so, so badly, but I'm not going to push it too far. So I will just tease. He's got some really deliciously diabolical stuff in this movie that he really does make the absolute most of. Before I leave my cast roll call, I will touch on two more here, beginning with Catherine Newton, again, I will say, pitch perfect casting. Between the unforgettable hair and wardrobe and also Newton's playful sass in the role, she really does make Sammy a wholly magnetizing character. She also gets some one-liners in the movie that could have been really risky in less adept hands, but in Newton's, they always feel right honest and wind up producing the intended effect and then also like stevens when things in the movie get especially violent and chaotic it is just so abundantly clear that newton is 
taking it to an 11 and having an absolute blast in the process. And in turn, it makes it just as fun for the viewer. I mean, it certainly had that effect on me. On top of that, I just also really appreciated what Sammy brought to the group dynamic. Again, she's got bite and is quite fun to watch, but I was pleasantly surprised by how she started to come across as the glue that binds, in a sense. She's got this sweet scene with uh, Barrera that I thought hit it just the right time. And also, I could not get enough of the buddy-buddy dynamic between Newton's character and Kevin Durant's character. And by the way, Kevin Durant winds up being one of the biggest scene stealers in this film. His line delivery and timing in this movie truly could not be better. After all that cast talk, I can't move on without shouting at the casting director, Rich D'Elia, who also cast Radio Silence's Scream movies and also countless other films you probably know and love. Abigail does have many standout components, but it also feels like an ensemble piece that couldn't have soared as high as it does without spot on casting. And they really nail it here across the board, every single role, truly. Now moving on to some of those other standout components. Bettinelli Olpin and Gillette continue to prove that they are directing aces when it comes to horror action. Once things get violent and deadly, it's just one bloody banger of a set piece after the next in this film, and all beautifully photographed by Aaron Morton, who actually also shot The First Omen, yet another uh, stunning new horror movie for us this month. I also have to shout out the lighting department on Abigail because the lighting kept catching my eye and I think really contributed big time in terms of adding texture and atmosphere to the mansion setting. The movie also boasts some A-plus stunt choreography. I especially loved how hard they leaned into the fact that Abigail is a ballerina vampire. One, it's just plain old fun to watch, but also I do think that heavily contributes to the fact that Abigail stands out from all the other vampire movies we have out there. I'll also tease one set piece that I really dug because of how well it plays with vampire tropes. I won't spoil what it is, but I'll tease that it is a very, very clever three versus one fight. And then of course, I love where they landed with the vampire look in general. The special effects, makeup and prosthetics look great and also allow performance nuances to shine through. And then of course there's blood. There is a lot of it and it's used very, very well. I know how twisted this is gonna sound, but anytime there was this massive burst of blood in Abigail, I was beaming. I was beaming, one, because the movie earns those moments quite well, but also because I am a horror movie lover with a massive appreciation for well-executed practical effects scenes like that. And this movie is just absolutely full of them. With that, I'm going to roll into my score. I am giving Abigail four and a half Deweys out of five on the Dewey Decimovie scale. My main criticism after one watch is something that I suspect could be alleviated by a second viewing. The script can get quite exposition heavy. And on the one hand, that exposition is necessary. It does serve the group dynamic, but admittedly, at times, it did feel like a lot. However, now that I have that information, particularly character backstory and motivation baked into my brain, I'm eager to give it another go and see how all of it flows and to make sure all those details align as well as I think they do. But regardless of how Abigail winds up settling for me, I would be absolutely shocked if this didn't become a highly rewatched film for me because it is a bonkers, blood-soaked good time. It's a clever spin on the vampire subgenre filled with electrifying personalities and downright wild set pieces. This is the bloody good time I was hoping for. So I cut there and then thought to myself, you all know I'm not home sweet home right now, so I might as well show you where I am. So let's do this. It's Bangkok. <laughs> 